Hey everyone, Sergey Praknevsky here from ukramedia.com and in this video I'm going to show you two different ways of how we can rig the drop down menu in After Effects. And by the end of it, we're going to have something like this. As you can see, we are in After Effects, we have a drop down menu, and when I click on this drop down menu, if I pick Team 1, notice I have a different logo and a different name. If I go to Team 2, we have a different logo, different name, and so on. So you get the idea, that's what we're going to create in this video. And without any further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so we are in After Effects, and here's my setup here. It's very basic. I purposely try to keep it very simple. And we have two layers. We have the first layer, it's a composition. If you double click on it, you can see it holds four logos. We have the second, the third, and so on. So at the moment, they don't do much other than just being in that composition. So let's go back to the original composition. So we have first layer, logos, and then we have the second one. It's just a text layer that's going to display the name of each team as we go through it. So that's my setup. So the first thing we need to do is create a layer, usually a no layer that we can store our drop down menu on. And in this case, just right click and go to new. And you can either go with no object, but I like to go with shape layer. When you click on shape layer, it, it creates like a blank shape layer. As you can see right here, it has absolutely nothing, has no contents. It just gives you this point. So it's perfect for no objects. I like to use it much, much better than solids because when you create a new no object, it creates a like a new solid in this folder. It gets kind of complicated, but this way it just, I don't know, I just enjoy it much better. Anyway, you don't have to go this route, but that's the route I like to take. So I'm going to select this, press enter. Let's rename it to control. And then we're going to create a, a drop down menu for this layer. So right click, go to effect and then expression controls. And we're going to click on this drop down menu control. When you click on it, it applies it to this layer. And if you go over here to the top effect controls panel in here, we have our drop down menu. And by the way, let's lock this in so that we always see this drop down menu and by clicking on this icon in here. So we're going to select this menu. We're going to press enter to rename it to something like team because this drop down menu will give us one team, but we'll have many in our list in here. So obviously right now our list is not the list we want. So we do want to edit this list. And to do that, just click on this edit button. And now we have a new window. So we have four different teams. So we need to add one more item, click on this plus sign. Now we have four, let's rename them. Obviously you, you would have your own teams in here, but I'm gonna say something like one, two, I like to keep things simple, three, and then four. So we have the names of our teams. That's good, press okay when you're done. So we have successfully created a new drop down menu called team and we have different teams. Obviously it's just a menu, it doesn't do much right now. If you click on three, it doesn't give you three logo or it doesn't say three in here, but we do need to use it to rig it up in here. So the first thing we're gonna rig up would be this text. When I click on something like two, I wanna see two written in here. If I click on team number one, I want to see the name of the team written in here like one. So how do we do that? And to do that, we're going to use expressions and we're going to go into this team text and we're going to go deep into it all the way to the source text property. We're going to select it, press S twice to solo it, Alt click on the stopwatch to create an expression. And now whatever we type in here drives this property. So this code is driving this property. And what we need to do, we need to create a variable for this drop down menu so we can use it in our code. And a variable is just a simple English. Uh, don't overthink it. It doesn't mean anything. It's just made up English. It doesn't mean anything unless you assign something to it. So in this case, we're just going to, it can be anything, but I'm going to type something like drop menu because we want, I mean, you want it to be named similar to what it is you're pointing to. So drop menu is going to mean this drop down menu. So we're going to say, hey, plain English, we're going to assign you. And to assign stuff, you use equal sign in the coding world. It's an assignment operator. It's not an equal sign. It doesn't mean what you think it would mean. It's an assignment operator. So we're saying, hey, this made up English, you are going to be, and we're going to pick whip to this drop down menu right here. So now we have this address or path to this drop down menu. And by default, it will grab the value of this. But just to be safe, you don't want After Effects to guess. I'm going to say period value and then semicolon, which is like a period in coding world. So now this drop down menu actually means the value of this menu. And the value of this menu is not the word that you see in here. Like for example, three, that's not the value. The value of it is actually a number. It's like a, it's a list index value, right? So we have one, two, three, four. So in coding, when you say, hey, what's the value of this two, it wouldn't be the word. It will be wherever it is in the list. In this case, it starts at one, so one, two. And because of that, we see number two. So it's very important that you know that drop-down menu just gives you a value that's a number. It's similar to a slider. 
it just visually it's more appealing because we can see what we're clicking on. But again, don't get it confused. It's, ju it's just a number. That's all that is. So let's keep going here. So now I'm going to introduce you to the first method, which is using arrays. And by the way, I got this method from Victoria Nice. She is an After Effects legend. So thank you, Victoria, for this awesome tip. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a new variable. Again, made up English. We're going to call it something like, well, let's do this, team names. So this variable is going to hold all like the names of our teams. Um, it can be, you know, one, two, three, and so on, but it's going to be an array. It'll make sense here in a second. So I'm going to tell this team names variable to be, we're going to use equal sign, and then we're going to open up the square bracket, which arrays are written with square brackets. So whatever we type within those square brackets, it's just going to be a list of different things. That's where we list the names um, of our teams. So for example, we can say something like, this is what you probably would do if you don't know coding. You're going to say something like one comma two three four and so on and naturally you would think this is correct i'm like hey i type stuff in those are my names but it would actually freak out on you because the way um after effects sees it it sees those um those words as keywords it thinks that it, it's some kind of code and it tries to figure out like what do you want me to do so we have to tell after effects when we type any kind of text we have to tell after effects to see it as text and to do that we use quotes Right? Whatever you type in quotes, it, it basically, that's our way of telling the computer, hey, it's a text. Don't overthink it. Don't use it as a keyword. It's just a plain text. Treat it as text. And that's why you see the double quotes or single quotes. Those are what we call strings. Whatever we type in there, it's just simple text. It basically tells um, After Effects to ignore it. Now, I know I'm over explaining this, but this is very important. This is the stuff I wish I knew starting out. So I'm going to type something like one. So we have the first name of the team one, and then I'm going to say comma, and then quotes again, we're going to say two, and then three, and then, well, again, make sure double, double quotes, uh, we're going to say four. And again, we're going to do semicolon, it's just a period in coding world. It's our way of saying, hey, that's the end of this line, let's go to the next line. So now, if I call this up, if I say team names, if I call this up, we will see the list of all of them in our composition. So watch this. As you can see, it lists all of them, but that's a bit of a problem because I want to see all of them. I only see, I want to see one at a time. So how do I access one at a time? And to do that, we're going to use square brackets again. So just go to the end of this variable that holds the list of all your items, right? And then we're going to do open square bracket. And within our square brackets, we're going to refer to the index value of each um, item. And the index value is not the same as it is in here. So the drop down menu started with one, but arrays start with zero. And that's where a lot of people get tripped up. So you would think the first item would actually be index number one, but it's not, it's zero. I can prove it to you because watch this. If I type one, it's gonna show me the second one too, right? Because zero is the first item. So if I type zero, it shows me one. And I know I'm over explaining this, but it's so crucial that you get this, all right? Because the drop down menu, the first item is one, right? So if I remember this variable right here, it's just English that means a number, which is the value of this drop down menu. In this case, it's gonna be one, right? If I take this and replace this number for my drop down menu variable, which means a number, don't get tripped up with the whole English thing, it's just a number. It's the same thing as saying, one, right? It's the same thing. So if I click away, notice it shows me two, even though it's the first item in here. But remember, we start with zero. So that's something that trips a lot of people. Trust me, I've been there. We all, we've all been there. We're like, hey, what the heck? I'm picking the right stuff, but it's, it's not working right. Well, again, it's because arrays start with zero and drop down menu starts with one. And I'm repeating myself, but it's so important that you get this. So how do we fix it? You can do a number of different ways. Heck, you can even go back to this array and maybe create like a, I don't know, just a random first item, right? Comma, something like this. And it will basically offset it for you, right? So then it would work properly because then it'll be zero, one, two, three. I guess that's one way to fix it, but it's probably not the best way to go about this. But what I like to do, I just go back to this number. Remember, I know it's a, it's a variable, but it means a number. I would just say, hey, I know right now you are one because I picked the first one, but 
I want to offset you by one value. I, I want you to be zero, right? So I'm just going to say subtract one. And when I click away, it will take one minus one is zero. And then it's going to point to the first value. So array method is super handy. You can basically rig up anything um, in After Effects using this method. It's super handy. The second method would be if else conditional statement. And here's what I want to do. So when I pick something like two, I want for the logo to go to the second logo, to the proper logo. If I go to three, I want to see logo number three and so on. So this is where if else statement comes in super handy. So let's do that. And for that, we're going to go to this team logo. Again, make sure you select control, make sure you lock your panel in here so you can see this drop down menu, even when you go into another composition. In this case, we're going to go into this team logo composition. So double click into it. We have our logos in here. And here's what we're going to do. So when I pick one, I want for the opacity of this. So I'm going to select this press T to see the opacity property. So when one is picked, I want for the opacity of it to be 100. And when something else is picked other than one, I want for it to be zero. So that's where if else statement comes in super handy. So let's create an expression, alt click on a stopwatch. So now this code is driving this property. And remember, we need to create a variable for, for the drop down menu. So we're going to stay consistent. We're going to say drop menu and we're going to tell it to be this drop down menu and we want the value. So I'm going to say period value because you know, you want to make sure you, you don't want after facts to be guessing. So now we're going to use if else conditional statement and it's very simple. We're going to say if it's a simple keyword, if, and then in parentheses, we're going to define a condition. We're going to say if, and then in, in here, we're going to say if the drop menu and remember drop menu is just a number. If that thing equals, and in coding world, double equal sign actually means equals. I know. So I'm going to say if it equals to one, in other words, if the drop down menu, if, if one is selected, right? One does equal to one. That's true. So if this condition is true, go to the first value. And the first value is going to be written in code block, curly brackets. If you're going to put it on one line, you have to use curly brackets. Just, that's just the way it goes. So in here, we're going to say, if this statement is true, we want to go to the first value and we're going to say the first value is going to be 100. In other words, if one is selected, I want for the opacity value to be 100. But if it's not selected, if something else is selected, I'm going to say else, it's another keyword. And then again, code block and in, inside of the code block, we're going to say zero. So don't overthink this. It's, it's that simple. So if this statement is true, go to the first value. And if it's false, go to the second value. So does drop down menu, does, does it equal to one? In other words, right now, what's the drop down menu? What's the value of it? So let's do four. The drop down menu value is actually four. It's the same thing as saying four. Does four equal to one? No, it, it doesn't right now. And because this statement is false, it's going to the second value. And that's why it's given us zero. But if we select the first one, does one equal to one? Yes. So this statement is true. And because of that, it's going to the first value. I hope you're, you're getting this because it's very simple. That's all you need to know. And this thing comes in very handy. However, you know, we, we rigged up the first one, but what if I want to do for the second layer? Then I have to copy this expression, you know, paste it to the opacity. And instead of one, I would change it to two, right? Because when two is selected, I want for it to be 100. You get the idea. Let me undo this. But I don't want to do that for all of my layers. Let's say, hypothetically speaking, what if you have like 100 layers? That's not too far-fetched. I mean, I worked on Fox Sports where we have a bunch of team logos. That's a lot of layers. You don't want to be doing that for every single layer. So instead of one, here's what you would do. You would just type a simple word called index. So you say index. And what index does, it basically refers to the layer index. So right now, the layer index of this layer is one. So that's what it means, one. But it's relative to its layer. So if you copy this, I'm going to select this, Control C, copy it, and then select all the other layers and paste it. So if you paste the same expression to all the other layers, the index value of those layers change. And it's, it's super awesome because then I don't have to do it every single time. So now if I select two, you'll see two. If I select three, you'll, you'll see three. And that's how easy it is to rig it up. All right, well, that's the end of this tutorial. And to be honest with you, that's how I create my motion graphic templates like this one. 
As you can see, it animates in, animates out. However, it is a motion graphic template, so you can click on it and you have some options like a drop down menu. So I can say, hey, give me team one. And then we have team one with the name, the colors, all of that stuff. And I use the same methods I just showed you. In fact, if you wanna see me rig this up on YouTube, definitely let me know in the comments below, but it's the same concept just slightly different, that's all. But thank you again for watching this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. And if you have, make sure you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you wanna learn more about expressions, we do have a course at ukramedia.com slash expressions. All of the links are at the bottom of this video in the description area. But until next time, my name is Sergey Praknevsky, and this is ukramedia.com.